Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, and today's contract tip has to do with something that has been brought to my attention lately uh, that I wanted to bring to your attention and tackle it from a contract and a license law perspective. So the issue that has been brought to my attention, we are in the spring of 2022 and we are in a hyper competitive market. And what I mean by that is there are more buyers on the market than there are properties to purchase. So uh, buyers are doing a variety of things to try and entice a seller to choose their offer over a competing buyer's offer. Um, in other words, they're trying to do whatever they can to make their offer look extremely attractive to a seller. Um, again, in a competitive situation. So one of the issues that has been brought to my attention um, is that apparently there are some lenders out there that are telling agents to put uh, a different amount as a to indicate that the buyer is putting a larger down payment, still getting financing and getting a loan, but to indicate that a buyer is getting a larger down payment, I'm sorry, having, putting down a larger down payment, putting more of their own cash into the deal than is actually the case. And uh, the other thing is lenders are telling agents, some lenders are telling agents uh, to go in with an offer using a conventional financing contingency exhibit when they know the buyer is actually getting perhaps an FHA uh, uh, loan or a VA loan. So if you have ever been in any of one of my classes, you have heard me say repeatedly that no one transaction is worth your license. No one transaction is worth your license, number one. Um, number two, you need to represent your buyer honestly uh, and fairly, uh, and you need to make sure that you are portraying uh, not misrepresenting an offer to a seller for a variety of reasons, um, license law reasons and contract reasons. So uh, a lender isn't um, necessarily up on all the license laws that do impact your license, that can jeopardize your license, have your license uh, suspended, revoked, or fined. Um, much less, I am not a lender, so I am not sure how all the mortgage fraud laws tie into misrepresentation of a buyer in a contract when you know that what you write in an offer on behalf of a buyer is not uh, the loan that a buyer is going to try to qualify for, much less pursue. Um, but regardless of all that, I'm staying out of the mortgage fraud part of it, uh, but I am going to con touch a little bit on the contract and the license law part of it in the state of Georgia. So for the contract part of it, if you are uh, working with a buyer and a seller and you are writing an offer on a Georgia Association of Realtors contract form, GAR, Georgia Association of Realtors contract form, on the conventional loan contingency exhibit, um, you do have to fill in, well, license law in and of itself does state that if you are uh, writing a contract that is subject to financing, it is a license law violation to not fill out all the information regarding the financing for the contingency in and of itself. But on the guard, that's a just general Georgia license law. But in, so you fill all that information out. And then it does say that a buyer may apply for a different loan. Um, however, protection for a buyer's earnest money, should they be denied a different loan other than the one that is described on the exhibit, will not protect their earnest money. But where we get into the bait and switch for the type of loan, on the GAR, Georgia Association of Realtors, uh, conventional loan contingency exhibit, which is GAR form F404. It does specifically state that buyers shall not have the right to apply for an FHA, VA, or USDA loan unless 
the parties agree to amend this agreement to add FHA VA or USDA loan contingency exhibit meeting FHA VA or USDA requirements as the case may be in which and if they do that then this conventional loan contingency exhibit shall no longer be part of this agreement nothing herein shall require the seller to agree to amend this agreement so the first bait and switch regarding changing from a conventional loan to an FHA loan knowing that um, again for contingency purposes a buyer may pursue any loan they want but uh, they cannot other than switching to an FHA or VA or USDA loan why is that the case well number one it's going to incur costs to the seller that they would not would not otherwise incur with a conventional loan number two a seller which is why the buyers might be doing this might not have accepted a buyer getting an FHA VA or USDA insured loan rather than a conventional loan or cash uh, the other thing is an appraisal for those government insured loans does stick with the property for another FHA or VA or USDA loan for a certain extended period of time so that's there's there's two kinds of bait and switch going on one is switching the loans um, knowing that they're going to switch the loans just to get a seller to accept the contract the other as I mentioned is the down payment so in any sort of loan contingency exhibit you do need to indicate that the loan amount is a blank a certain percentage of the purchase price so obviously the percentage that they're not getting a loan for the buyer is putting as their down payment that they've got cash in their bank account or wherever uh, that they are bringing as part of their down payment and again what has been brought to my attention is that uh, various lenders are uh, telling real estate agents to go ahead and fill out a financing contingency exhibit indicating that the buyer is putting 25% down and only getting a loan for 75% uh, to get that to get that buyer's offer accepted by the seller when the buyer knows they're not putting that much down the lender knows they're not putting that much down and you as the agent know the buyer is not putting that much per, uh, of a down payment in so here's where we get to license law and the realtor code of ethics and um, under Georgia license law under OCGA which is official code Georgia annotated in our law books uh, title 43 chapter 40 under the unfair trade practices unfair trade practice OCGA 434025b2 it is a license law violation to intention um i'm sorry uh 43425b21 uh it is an unfair trade practice and a license law violation for you as the real estate agent who holds a license in the state of georgia to make any substantial misrepresentation that is a misrepresentation if you know the buyer does not is not putting down 25 percent of the loan Additionally, another unfair trade practice, OCGA 43, uh, Title 43, Chapter 40, 25B28, being a party to any falsification of any portion of any contract or other document involved in a real estate transaction that will have ramifications on your license, uh, either a fine, suspension, revocation. Um, it depends on how the greg hearing committee what they find so that is where it is a violation of license law additionally if you are a realtor then you also subscribe to the realtor code of ethics and it would be a violation of article one and article two uh and article nine of the realtor code of ethics so article one of the realtor code of ethics states that when representing a buyer seller landlord tenant or other client as an agent realtors pledge themselves to protect and promote the interests of their client the obligation of the client is primary but it does not relieve realtors of their obligation to treat all parties honestly uh, when serving a buyer seller landlord tenant or other party in the non-agency capacity they also remain to treat all parties honestly so it is dishonest if you knowingly write an offer with a different down payment amount then you know the buyer has cash that they're putting in for the down payment 
Article 2 of the Realtor Code of Ethics states that realtors shall avoid exaggeration, misrepresentation, or concealment of pertinent facts relating to the property or the transaction. Realtors um, uh, shall not, however, be obligated to, to discover latent defects in the property, to advise on matters outside of the scope of their real estate off, uh, license, so forth and so on. But, uh, and standard of practice 2-4, realtors shall not be parties to the naming of false consideration in any document unless it is naming, okay, that's, that has to do with consideration. Uh, but exaggeration, misrepresentation, or concealment of pertinent facts. And then Article 9 of the Realtor Code of Ethics states that realtors for the protection of all parties shall assure whenever possible that all agreements related to real estate transactions, including but not limited to listing of representation agreements, purchase contracts, and leases are in writing in clear and understandable language expressing the specific terms conditions, obligations, and commitments of the parties. So again, no one transaction is worth your license. No one transaction is worth your professional integrity. And um, in representing clients and customers, as a real estate agent, you are charged with being um honest and professional and negotiating on behalf of your client so that the public does have all the pertinent facts and a buyer and a seller may make informed consented decisions based on the contract and the actual facts of the offer. Uh, when you are representing buyers, again, in a hyper-competitive market, there are a number of ways to um, make a buyer's offer more competitive. But misrepresentation and falsifying a document when you know that uh, putting a larger down payment uh, than the buyer is actually putting down is not one of them. Even at a lender's direction, if you are working with a lender that is advising, suggesting, or asking you to do that, I strongly suggest uh, that you find another lender with whom to work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education.